From this day forward, let us proclaim our nation under the guidance of black Jesus, a figure who represents not just the cornerstone of Christian faith, but also a symbol of the universal values of love, compassion, and brother. Jesus Christ is the most famous black radical revolutionary in history, and he was treated just like Dr. King. What was Afro to long hair. <laughs> His hair straightened out, right? Was Jesus black? If not, why do all the old paintings found show him as black? And why are all the new and famous paintings shown mostly to the world as white? After Russia revealed the black Jesus painting, small ancient villages with similar paintings emerged. Now in Ethiopia, the oldest paintings reveal Jesus as black. So, are these paintings a lie? Or is what we have been told about God to this day a lie? Let's find out. In a world where history often seems set in stone, some moments shake the foundations of our understanding. Imagine the ripple effect when the image of a revered figure, central to the faith of millions, is suddenly revealed to be radically different from what we've been taught. This is the seismic shift ignited by recent revelations about the ethnicity of biblical icons, particularly the portrayal of Jesus as black. For African people worldwide, this isn't just a revelation, it's a reclamation of identity and a challenge to centuries of Eurocentric narratives, but this narrative is based on the paintings found. So, is it even legitimate based on the places the paintings are found? They used it to keep that replica or copy of the Ark of the Covenant inside their churches. That's why it makes them churches and counted as churches and oh. counted as, as a holy place. That makes them, them house. But except without uh, the holy or the, uh, the replica, this church will be like house. No, it doesn't be meaningful. It will be counted as, as a house. Yeah. It will be structured. But right. If the Ark found out in that place, that the people, the worshippers, count that this is the holiest place. The narrator explains the origin of church nomenclature, emphasizing that the presence of certain elements, such as paintings, played a pivotal role in designating a place as a church. He said a location would only be identified as a church if it contained replicas or representations of religious significance, particularly those referring to the respective deity. For instance, if a place housed a painting depicting religious figures or narratives central to the faith, it would be recognized as a church. So, the paintings he showed at the beginning serve as defining features, encapsulating the essence of religious devotion and cultural identity associated with the respective faith traditions. This proves that the paintings are, in fact, very important and aren't just kept there by a random someone. From childhood, we are shaped by the images we see, especially those of religious figures. For generations, the predominant portrayal of Jesus as white has reinforced a hierarchy of beauty and virtue that marginalized black people. But what happens when the face of divinity reflects the diversity of humanity? The unveiling of black biblical icons challenges centuries-old depictions and empowers African people to see themselves reflected in the divine. Um, he said, let us be dissatisfied until that day when nobody will shout white power, when nobody will shout black power, but everybody will talk about God's power and human power. Do you agree with that? I love the Lord. And my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is the most famous black radical revolutionary in history. And he was treated just like Dr. King. He was uh, arrested on occasion. He was a great black leader. But was he also crucified because of his race? And he was also cru crucified or mm -hmm. assassinated. This is what happens to black activists. We are killed by the government. 
Well, and, and if you need context, if you read your Bible, it will say that Jesus had feet like burnt brass and hair like wool. I don't know if you notice, but our hair seems to be more like wool and we seem to be uh, likened to that color than anyone. The assertion that Jesus was black and that his crucifixion was partly due to his racial identity is a topic of debate and interpretation. It's true that Jesus lived in the region of Judea, located in the Middle East, and that people in that region likely had varying shades of skin tone. Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. The reasons for Jesus' crucifixion do not primarily revolve around his teachings, which challenged the religious and political authorities of his time rather than his racial identity. According to Christian belief, Jesus was crucified because he was perceived as a threat to the existing power structures and religious norms, not solely because of his race. However, it is undeniable that throughout history, people of African descent, along with other marginalized racial and ethnic groups, have faced discrimination, persecution, and injustices similar to those experienced by Jesus. The comparison between the treatment of black people and the persecution of Jesus can be seen as a symbolic reflection of the systemic injustices and oppression faced by marginalized communities. But what about the concept of the Bible being a white man's book? The concept of the Bible being referred to as a white man's book stems from a historical and cultural context marked by colonialism, imperialism, and the Eurocentric interpretation and dissemination of Christianity. Throughout history, European colonizers often imposed their cultural and religious beliefs onto the indigenous populations they encountered, including the promotion of Christianity as part of their civilizing mission. The characterization of the Bible as a white man's book reflects the dominance of Eurocentric interpretations of Christianity and the marginalization or erasure of other cultural and racial perspectives within religious discourse. This perception has been reinforced by depictions of biblical figures and narratives in art, literature, and popular culture that often portray them as European or white. Moreover, the association of Christianity with whiteness has been used to justify and perpetuate systems of racial superiority and colonial oppression. By positioning Christianity as inherently linked to white identity, colonial powers sought to reinforce their authority and legitimize their dominance over non-white populations. However, it's important to recognize that the Bible is a collection of religious texts with diverse origins, spanning various cultures, languages, and historical contexts. The original authors and characters within the Bible were predominantly from the Middle East and North Africa, regions with populations that would not be considered white by modern standards. The perception of the Bible as a white man's book reflects a distortion of religious identity and history driven by colonialist agendas and power dynamics. Challenging this perception involves acknowledging the diverse cultural and racial heritage within Christianity and reclaiming narratives that have been marginalized or appropriated by dominant Western interpretations. It also requires acknowledging and addressing how religion has been used to justify and perpetuate systems of oppression and inequality based on race. You will see that as a little kid in your learning history, as a black person, black people showed up to be slaves, right? And so that doesn't give you, like if that's the history that you get about your people, oh, we, we exist for the purpose of being slaves. Well, if that's the history that you get, then you don't know who you are, right? And so th there are so many people who say the Bible is a white man's book. The Bible, there's, that's, not even, that's not even remotely possible. If the Bible were a white man's book, they would have took a whole bunch of stuff out of, out of it. Some of the stuff I'm going to share with you today, they would have taken out if it was a white man's book. Right? So it's not, the Bible is not a white man's book. Okay? The Bible is God's book. And God is no respecter of persons. So we see a couple of things. First of all, where did the whole quote, racial, there's only one race. I talked about that last week. There's only one race, the human race. And all humans on earth came from one father and one mother. And then a little bit later on, one other father and one other mother, right? Say, so what does that mean? They came from Adam and Eve. And then what happened? The flood happened. So all human beings that exist on the earth today came from Noah and his wife, period. 
But why is this discussion being given so much importance? If a figure as significant as Vladimir Putin were to make statements about the racial identity of Jesus and present evidence, such as an ancient painting depicting Jesus as black, it would undoubtedly generate significant attention and discussion worldwide. Such statements from a prominent political leader could challenge prevailing narratives and provoke debate on race, religion, and historical representation. If Putin indeed presented compelling evidence, such as an ancient painting, suggesting that Jesus was depicted as black in some historical contexts, it could prompt scholars, religious leaders, and the public to reevaluate their understanding of Jesus' racial identity and the implications of such representations. Additionally, it led to discussions about the significance of race in religious iconography, the impact of colonialism on religious imagery, and how cultural and political biases have shaped historical narratives. The shockwaves caused by Putin's statements would likely extend beyond the realm of religious studies, sparking conversations about race relations, identity politics, and the role of religion in shaping cultural perceptions. It could also prompt broader reflections on the importance of historical accuracy, inclusivity, and diversity in understanding and interpreting shared cultural heritage. Hear him out. Today, we stand on the precipice of a monumental revelation, a moment that redefines not only our understanding of history, but also the path forward for our great nation. In an extraordinary discovery hidden beneath centuries of lore and legend, we have opened what can only be described as the oldest vault known to mankind. What we found within its ancient confines challenges the very fabric of our beliefs and heralds a new dawn for our country. Within this vault, we discovered figures of bi biblical proportions, characters that many have read about, debated and revered. These figures, preserved against the sands of time, reveal a truth that is as profound as it is transformative. They are all black. This revelation, this undeniable truth, stands before us not as a contradiction to our faith, but as a testament to the diversity and unity that faith embodies. If Vladimir Putin's statements about Jesus being depicted as black in historical paintings were to be widely acknowledged, it would have profound emotional and psychological effects on both black and white communities. For black individuals who have grown up within religious traditions that predominantly depict Jesus as white, discovering evidence suggesting that Jesus may have been portrayed differently in ancient artworks provokes feelings of validation and empowerment. It offers a sense of affirmation of their own racial and cultural identity, challenging the notion that whiteness is inherently linked to divinity and spiritual authority. However, it also brings to light the historical erasure and marginalization of black perspectives within religious iconography, prompting a recessment of the representation of race within religious institutions. On the other hand, for white individuals who have long upheld the image of a white Jesus, grappling with the possibility that this portrayal does not align with historical accuracy is unsettling and challenging. It leads to feelings of betrayal or disillusionment as well as a sense of discomfort in confronting the implications of racial biases within religious traditions. However, it also serves as an opportunity for introspection and growth, encouraging a deeper understanding of the complexities of race and identity within religious contexts. Not as a challenge to our beliefs, but as an opportunity to embrace a wider, more inclusive understanding of our history and spirituality. Russia in its rich tapestry of cultures, traditions, and people, is uniquely positioned to lead the world into this new era of understanding and acceptance. From this day forward, let us proclaim our nation under the guidance of Black Jesus, a figure who represents not just the cornerstone of Christian faith, but also a symbol of the universal values of love, compassion, and brotherhood. This Black Jesus, whose likeness and history have been unveiled from the oldest vault, is a message to us all that divinity knows no color. Discovering and embracing the truth, even if it challenges previously held beliefs or narratives, is a cause for celebration. It's an opportunity for growth, learning, and deeper understanding. Instead of dwelling on regret or disappointment about past misconceptions, focusing on the positive aspects of uncovering the truth 
and its potential for fostering greater awareness, empathy, and unity is important. Celebrating the truth can involve acknowledging the resilience and strength of individuals and communities who have endured historical injustices and marginalization. It can also involve recognizing the richness and diversity of human experiences and perspectives, including those related to race, culture, and spirituality. Moreover, embracing the truth can inspire meaningful dialogue, reconciliation, and collective action toward building a more just and inclusive society. We can create a future grounded in honesty, compassion, and mutual respect by confronting uncomfortable truths and working towards greater understanding and solidarity. Questions arise. How does this revelation reshape our understanding of scripture? What implications does it have for the future of Christianity in Africa and beyond? As African people reconsider their relationship with faith, they embark on a journey of rediscovery, seeking to reconcile centuries of colonial influence with their cultural heritage. That spiritual truth transcends race, and that our common humanity binds us more tightly than our differences divide us. Let this discovery remind us that history is not just the story of those who wield power, but also of those whose contributions have been overlooked or forgotten. It challenges us to re-examine what we know, to question our assumptions, and to open our hearts to the broader possibilities of understanding and faith. As we embark on this journey of discovery and understanding, let us do so with open minds and compassionate hearts. Let us build a nation that truly reflects the teachings of the Black Jesus, a nation that stands for justice, equality, and love for all, regardless of race or creed. Here you must be thinking, why did they even lie to you? Well, simply to keep Black people their slaves. Throughout colonial and post-colonial periods, European powers often employed religious and cultural narratives to assert dominance over indigenous peoples and justify practices such as slavery and colonization. The whitewashing of Jesus and other biblical figures is a part of this broader pattern of cultural imperialism where European cultural norms and standards were imposed on diverse populations around the world. By depicting Jesus as white and presenting Christianity as inherently linked to European identity and superiority, Colonial powers sought to legitimize their domination over non-white populations and reinforce racial hierarchies. This distortion of religious imagery and narratives not only served to reinforce systems of oppression, but also contributed to the erasure of diverse cultural perspectives and marginalized voices within religious traditions. It perpetuated harmful stereotypes and perpetuated the myth of white superiority, which continues to have lasting effects on societal attitudes and structures today. Recognizing and confronting how religion has been used as a tool of oppression is essential for fostering understanding, healing, and reconciliation. It involves acknowledging past injustices, amplifying marginalized voices, and working towards a more inclusive and equitable future where all individuals are treated with dignity, respect, and equality. And black people have been enslaved by the white people for the last 200 years, and we've been lying to them about Jesus is black, not white. We completely lied about it and then enslaved them. Black people are gonna be pretty pissed. Rightfully so. I would be fucking mad too. So, what happens next? Obviously they're gonna do some, you know, verification process on these uh, paintings, but I mean, who lied? Who whitened or lightened up the pictures of Jesus and spread them all over the world to spread white propaganda? Who did that? I mean, I don't know, because I'm new to religion. I mean, my guess is the Vatican. Is the, the, the Vatican do it? Like, you tell me, who spread this white propaganda? If it's not real, are, are black people going to be upset? I think so, rightfully so. They should have their place back. And whoever enslaved the black people should be held accountable. The unveiling of black biblical icons is not just about the past. It's about shaping the future. It's a call to action for African people to reclaim their narratives, 
celebrate their heritage, and demand equality and representation. As we confront the legacies of colonialism and racism, we must also envision a future where diversity is celebrated and all voices are heard. It's a journey toward inclusion, empowerment, and collective liberation. Do you think this was all done to keep black people slaves? Whoever was behind all this, how do you think they should be held accountable now? In the comment section, let us know how you feel about Jesus being black. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If so, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about. The black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.